A tiny speck on the southwest coast, Goa was once the jewel in Portugal's eastern empire. A lush green territory with mile upon mile of beautiful beaches. Near the village of Dona Paula the luxury hotel Cidade de Goa stands in a sheltered palm-fringed cove, a perfect setting for a holiday of peaceful relaxation. Everything is spacious. Stepped up from the beach, the hotel is designed to provide quiet shady corners, with rooftop terraces, space to choose, be it quiet solitude or join the hub-hub around the pools. The swimming pools are the main gathering area. Three restaurants offer diverse cuisine from simple samosa to luscious lobster thermidor. The health club gymnasium and beauty parlor complete the area, while to the side the gardens are another shaded delight, a putting green and tennis courts are set here but most people choose to sit or walk and admire the peaceful beauty of the meticulously kept lawns and borders. In Panjim the capital, its Portuguese heritage lingers on, with its whitewashed red tiled houses and winding avenues. Panjim is India's smallest and pleasantest capital town and one of the least Indian. Since independence in 1961 the Indian government has had to provide electricity, roads and bridges throughout the area. Local ferries cross into northern Goa. On the north bank motorcycle taxis, Regular taxis and tour buses ply for hire to go to the largest market in the area at Mapsa. People from all over the area pour here to do their weekly shopping and you can buy anything from a glass bangles to water buffalo. The Gypsy tribe do great business with their silver jewelry and gaudy decorated clothing. The tribe was historically a warring faction from the north whose leader vowed if they didn't win the ensuing battle they would never return to their homeland. They lost and have been nomadic ever since. The 15th century Sri Mangesh temple is one of the few old Hindu temples to survive. What Muslim invaders didn't t destroy the Catholic Inquisition took care of. The majority of the one million inhabitants make their living from agriculture, from the three main crops of rice, coconut and cashew nuts. The living is very basic, no mechanization here. The good old buffalo is the beast of burden and the provider of good nutritious milk for the family. Cows and buffalo both domestic and sacred were to become a familiar scene in the northern city streets. Two and a half hours flying time north to India's capital Delhi starting point on India's most popular tour known as the Golden Triangle Delhi, Jaipur, Agra. 
Now the official residence of the Prime Minister the formal vice-regal lodge stands as massive testimony to the imperious vision of the New Delhi. Broad avenues stately homes and landscaped gardens compare starkly to the heaving narrow streets of Old Delhi. The word traffic takes on a whole new meaning in India. Cycles, cycle rickshaws and bullock carts lead the race for as race what appears to be in progress and are quickly overtaken by the cars, taxis, buses and lorries. The incongruity is well illustrated in Connaught Circus, the British designed to be a regal hub of the city now overlaid with slum dwelling. Beggars and grime and incessant traffic in a land dragging itself only slowly into the 20th century the beauty is more in the legacy of past centuries when giant red forts proclaimed an all-powerful Mughal empire. Delhi is home to first mosque built in India despite the ravages of time the rich ornamentation and carving of Quran quotations are still beautifully legible. Within the mosque an iron pillar has stood in the courtyard since the 5th century and no one knows why it is here or why it is still rust-free. Popular legend goes if you can gasp your hands around standing with your back to the pillar your wish will be granted. Emperor Humayun's tomb built in 1566 blends red sandstone with white black and yellow marble. Many other notable moguls are buried here and in this serene setting it's strange to contemplate how many were murdered princes, victims of foul play. Thankfully the gardens are now an oasis of peace amid the throng of Delhi. From Delhi Highway 8 165 miles though Haryana state into Rajasthan state heading for Jaipur. Few private cars all lorries doing long-haul deliveries they are overloaded and only basically maintained and wildly driven. The number of horrific crashes are unbelievable. Its thought lack of sleep or falling asleep at the wheel is to blame for many. Approaching the city of Jaipur the traffic changes again jumbo traffic jams. First stop the Amber Palace the majestic hill top fortress for six centuries the capital of Rajasthan under the great Maharaja Singh dynasty. Access now for tourists like generations of Maharajas is by elephant. Twenty minutes up narrow cobbled paths gives time to drink in the aura of this vast deserted palace. From the central courtyard where the banyan trees are night roost to a horde of monkeys which roam over the buildings during the day. The palace rises higher to the royal apartments. The main attraction is the Shurish Mahal or Mirror Palace built by Jar Singh. The whole is studded with mirror fragments set in plaster. Creating a glittering warmth against the cool white marble, this is set around the recreational courtyard of the twelve royal ladies. What tales these walls could tell? Maharaja Jay Singh planned and built the city of Jaipur in rose-colored terracotta which continues today giving its name of Pink City. The entire city is encircled by fortified walls and guarded by seven gates. Streets 110 feet wide designed for armies of elephants are now a bustling commercial capital traffic again becomes a fasciation itinerate sacred cows, the streets like mini roundabouts here elephants and camels join the teeming cycle rickshaws, cycles, bullock carts, buses you name it's here. The seven-story city palace still home to present Maharaja Sawai Singh is an immense complex occupying one-seventh of the whole city area. 
The palace with its adjoining palace of harems has 5,000 rooms connecting with the Maharaja's suite allowing undetected visits by his 1,600 concubines two floors are now a museum showing royal costumes elephant howdah armor and paintings. two enormous cauldrons the largest silver items in the world testifies to the Maharaja's idiosyncrasies. When the Maharaja Maido Singh II sailed to England to attend the coronation of King Edward VII these urns carried water from the Ganges the only water this devout Hindi would drink. All the palace guards wear the traditional turban as part of their uniform, 40 feet of scarlet muslin is wound seemingly very easily in just over one minute. From the peace and tranquility within the Maharaja's palace the hustle and bustle of the city streets again illustrates the incongruity that is India. Behind the teeming chaos the side streets of Jaipur are a hive of industry. The city is famous for its jewelry and gem cutting most of India's famous precious and semi-precious stones originate from here. Persian style carpets are another busy institutes in these workshops both old ladies and young girls spin the wool ready for the weavers. From dark dusty sheds beautiful top quality single knot carpets take three boys around a year to make the nimble finger teenagers sat at their looms creating intricate patterns. From the loom the carpets then must be sealed, this done with a blow lamp applied to the back surface the next stage is to be washed and hung out to dry in the sun. Finally the fringe is added by nimble fingered young girls. corner brings a new experience from leprosy beggars. To delightful smells from the stalls with spices fruit vegetables and flowers. Route 11 east from Rajasthan to Uttar Pradesh to the ghost city of Fate Pasikri. Built during the second half of the 16th century by the Emperor Akbar, Fate Pasikri, the city of victory, was the capital of the Mughal Empire for only some ten years. The complex of monuments and temples, all in a uniform architectural style, includes one of the largest mosques in India, the Jama Masjid. The great Akbar was convinced this place would continue to bring him good fortune. He was forced to abandon it due to water shortage just 14 years after. Akbar moved his capital back to his magnificent fort at Agra set high guarding the mighty Yamuna River. The red fort walls 70 feet high with 40 foot moat and another. 70 foot high wall behind surrounds the palaces built in succession by Akbar. The Taj Mahal is an ivory-white marble mausoleum on the south bank of the Yamuna River in the Indian city of Agra. It was commissioned in 1632 by the Mughal Emperor, Shah Jahan, reigned from 1628 to 1658, to house the tomb of his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. The tomb is the centerpiece of a 17-hectare complex, which includes a mosque and a guesthouse, and is set in formal gardens bounded on three sides by a crenellated wall. 
used so lavishly throughout the mausoleum is a delight of delicate tiny flowers. Shah Jahan was deposed by his son, annoyed at the enormous cost of this building and his last eight years was spent grieving from the fort across the river. India's decline was swift then but Shah Jahan extravagant gesture is now the cornerstone to India's booming tourist industry.